This entire gaming setup to include all of the peripherals, the monitor, and even the custom gaming PC cost me just $606. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to build this for yourself. Now I'll admit, if you went and added every single item on this list and every single PC component from this build right this very second, your total shopping cart might be closer to $650. Some of the parts and the peripherals were found on some pretty good deals, but I didn't include anything that was a crazy once in a lifetime deal that you can't repeat for yourself. If you have a little patience, then you too can be playing Starfield at 60 FPS, Cyberpunk even higher than that, and enjoy what feels like a premium gaming setup on a budget. On a bus. We're going to dive into everything on this table, all after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, and you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate Windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now, which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18, and I'll have that linked at the top top of the description. They not only have Windows keys, but also a ton of other stuff such as Office and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple and only takes like 3 minutes total, so activate Windows today and remove that nasty watermark, and don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. Alright, so we're going to start with the monitor first, because other than the pure performance gaming PC, this one is definitely the king of the show. This is the Kuruby 24E3, and I do you actually have a recent dedicated video about it if you're interested in the top right corner. If you didn't already see, Optimum Tech, who I consider the monitor boy, actually made a video about this a few months ago, and ever since his high praise for it, so many other YouTubers, including myself, made a video as well. This is a 24 inch 1080p 165Hz IPS panel with a 1 millisecond response time, and it just doesn't make sense why it only costs $100. Right out of the box, without any tuning, the colors look absolutely stunning for gaming, and I explained in my review video that I just had so much fun testing this monitor because I caught myself just appreciating how good this panel was for the budget price. If you go on Amazon right now, it'll probably be posted closer to $105 to $115, but like I said in the intro, with some patience, you'll be able to find the same deal that I did. This monitor often goes down to right at $100, but even at $115, it's still a great deal. And yes, this will obviously work perfectly fine with consoles as well. I don't know why, but people always ask that question in the comment section. Moving on, we have the mouse, and honestly, this was pretty impressive as well. It's the Diera M1SE wire mouse and I paid $20 for it, but at the time of filming it was actually on a nice little sale down to 16 bucks. It weighs 75 grams so it's not the lightest ultra light mouse out there, but I do actually kind of appreciate the bit of extra weight because it makes it feel a bit more legit and not so cheap. It comes with some RGB action as you'd expect and without any software you can change the color to whatever you want, but the colors line up with different DPI settings so if you don't like the color of your DPI setting you'll have to use the software. I wasn't able to try this out for myself, but judging by the screenshots on Amazon, this looks pretty solid and you don't usually see this level of detail with mice under $20. It also has a standard 1000 Hz polling rate and that DPI can be cranked up to 12,800, which nobody is going to do. The M1 SE is sitting on Amazon with a 4.5 star rating with over 700 reviews, so the masses are definitely in agreement that this one's pretty solid. The masses are also sold on this keyboard and if you don't already know, this Meiji 60% keyboard is actually kind of famous on YouTube right now. Now, I am not part of the custom keyboard community at all, but if you look on YouTube, it seems like all of those creators have made a video about this keyboard at some point or another. Apparently, this is one of the best customizable, friendly boards at this price range, and that's how I actually stumbled upon it. It's got completely hot swappable switches, which I saw a lot of other people do, and there's also a lot of modding tutorials for this keyboard as well. And for the first time ever, I actually decided to try one of these keyboard modding projects for myself, but whatever you do, please don't judge me because I actually have no idea what I'm talking about. Apparently the easiest mods for these keyboards like this are first removing all of the keys and installing painters tape on the back side of the PCB and then also cutting some foam to fill out the empty space in the plastic housing. Apparently this will remove some of the plasticky echo noise from the key clicks and I did actually record a sound test before and after the mod so take a look for yourself.
Now, I'm not sure how much of a difference you'll be able to hear on YouTube, but right away, I did actually notice a small difference and I could hear exactly what I did. Each key press's sound was much quicker and cleaner, and I do think it was actually worth the trouble. I completely underestimated how much of a pain it is to remove each individual key on a keyboard, which I've never done before, probably never will, and I definitely got my confirmation that this isn't the hobby for me. At the end of the day, I can still hear that plasticky, clicky sound to it, but it does sound better than when we started, so I'm at least happy that I tried that mod. As far as RGBs go, unfortunately you can only get this light blue color and it looks fine if you want that color, but you can also just choose to turn it off, which is what I did. There's also a ton of different color options available on Amazon for all around the same price point, and our keyboard came with a few extra red keycaps as well. Next up we have the headset, and this is the HyperX Cloud Stinger 2 Core, and I'll have links to literally everything we're talking about today down in the description by the way, and these cost anywhere between $24 to $30. I've actually never heard of these until I started researching for this video, and as the name suggests, these are the second version of the OG and legendary cloud stingers. I actually used those so many times back in the day during my budget setup guide videos. These new ones have a black and blue design, which is kind of a bummer compared to the original black and red, but there's also a black and green and white and black version available as well. Just like every budget headset, you're not gonna get any crazy high quality, high fidelity audio or anything, but coming from HyperX, these are still much better than those super cheap knockoff brand $20 headsets, and the comfort on these is pretty solid as well. This type of mesh breathable ear cup has always been my personal favorite because the heat doesn't get trapped in there and I can personally wear this style for a longer period of time. They're also super lightweight, so it's honestly perfect for those long degenerate gaming sessions. The microphone is pretty solid as well for this price range. You can swivel it up to automatically mute it, but then whenever you swivel it back down, it unmutes it and this is what it sounds like. Now, one thing to note, which is extremely important is that I don't think ours came with a PC adapter cable, which lets you plug into both the green speaker port and the pink microphone port. This headset is originally designed for consoles where you just need that one combo port. I saw an Amazon review saying that theirs didn't come with an adapter and another review saying that theirs did come with an adapter and I'm not sure if we just lost ours or if ours didn't come with one as well. Some PC cases will have a combo jack like ours does thankfully but some only have a separate microphone and separate speaker input. Definitely research that ahead of time otherwise if you do buy this headset you're gonna have to also buy an adapter like this as well. And to wrap up the peripherals we have the XL mouse pad and honestly there's just an unlimited amount of options on Amazon between between $10 and $20, so just get whatever design you think looks best. I really like this topographic one that I've been using at home. The white and black design will match perfectly with pretty much any setup, but again, just get whatever you want. For today's video, we're actually using the custom ZTT one, and that's just so I can tell you about how you can score one of these for yourself. Over on zttbuilds.com, if you purchase one of our restock PCs, not the monthly drops, you'll get a free setup upgrade, which includes a fake plant, which you've been watching this entire video, also a ZTT headset stand, which we've also been using, and then of course, Course this XL ZTT mouse pad. We're including all of this for free with our builds, and you even get a copy of my new ebook as well with any PC build or consulting purchase. But if you're on a budget and want to get the absolute best value for your money for your gaming PC, then I would definitely recommend just building one like this yourself. Unlike my normal aesthetics over everything mindset, this PC was assembled with performance and performance only in mind, which is why it doesn't look that flashy. I do have a dedicated video about this in the upper right hand corner, but for a quick spoiler, it's rocking a Ryzen 5. 3600, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and an RX 5700 XT. This build absolutely dominated the benchmarks with 64 FPS in Cyberpunk using 1080p in high settings. Modern Warfare 3 got 135 FPS in 1080p balance, so we could utilize our higher refresh rate monitor, and even Starfield got a 60 FPS average with 1080p and low settings and FSR turned on. If you want to see the full benchmarks and the full parts list and where to find everything, then check out that video after this one. But if you are trying to put together a pure performance battle station setup, then this is definitely the type of build that you'll want to pair with it. All in all, here's what the entire shopping list is looking like for this setup and the prices that I paid, which total up to $606. Like I said, some of these parts could be a tad bit more expensive or even cheaper than what I paid, but as long as you use some patience and grab the good deals, this is pretty repeatable for the $600 to $650 price range. And just as a final reminder, that full dedicated video on how to build this PC is right there on the screen now.